Hello. Mm, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a day in my life would likely start, well, my alarm would likely go off around like quarter to seven and then lull about for a little while um, and I climb that first hurdle um, out of bed. Usually I like to have some water, um, maybe have some tea or I really recently got into this dandelion beverage. Oh my it's god. It's so good. And they, the one I got, it's like mixed with sugary, like a coffee um, substitute. You are superior. Only because it makes me really jittery and, yeah. and I also have a roommate this season so um, sometimes we have a little journal session together. It's really nice. I like to be pretty quiet. I try to journal about what I'm grateful for just real quick off the top of the dome. I think it's like a nice way to start the day and try to have that practice. I mean, it doesn't always happen. I'm human, I don't always get to it. But um, I try to at least think about it. I drink coffee. Good morning. Welcome to my kitchen. It's 8 a.m. And today I'm going to take you through a day in the life as an actor at the Stratford Festival. But first, we do the most important thing that we do all day. I like to exercise after that. I find it's, I think, partly because so much of the job is about like imagination and existing in an imaginary stakes that you make real for yourself, but are kind of like built in the uh, artistic bud. It's healthy for me to do literal things like lifting heavy objects and, you know, like that feeling of like doing something physically hard, yeah. it like exor exercises and exorcises. That, that. <laughs> I'm so inspired hearing about your day because you do so many like things in service of the job, <gasps> which is great. There's another option where you just lie down paralyzed by fear until you have to work. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. No, I don't. But I, I do find know. that I like soften the rest of the day around the central thing, which is the show. I just got back from seeing the Res Sisters at the TPT Canopy. It was incredible. It's also really cool to see the stage from the audience perspective. We spend so much time on the stage that it's easy to kind of assume sight lines and what it looks like from the ground, but it was way different than I thought. <laughs> Good thing I did that one day before we close. Um, now I'm gonna make some lunch. Then I'm gonna steam my voice, do some stretching, get ready. I've got a few hours till our 5 p.m. call. And then the magic begins. All right, we're outside. It's a beautiful day. Um, put on a little outfit after moving my laundry around, getting some stuff packed, because I have to move on Monday. Um, now I'm heading to the Tom Patterson Theater for the 11 a.m. showing of The Red Sisters. And it's so wonderful to be able to see theater while doing theater, you know. A lot of the times the schedules, like before the pandemic schedules were really hectic and it'd be a lot more difficult, I think, to see um, a show. So this is a very special occasion and especially to support the indigenous community um, that's new to Stratford. A lot of, a lot of Stratford debuts in this show. Um, an indigenous story. Um, yeah, should be fantastic. Let's go. If we have a daytime show, then I'll come to the, to the theater for 9.30. We start, have a little warm up. We do our dance call, we do our fight call. Um, and then we get into character. I'm learning too how to look that like, I think coming out of theater school and then Birmingham Conservatory, I think I got it in my head that all actors should be worked the same and in the same way in order to do some caliber of a, that job. Like if everyone warms up the same way, then everyone will do a great job. And I'm just learning like I, vocally, I'm way more sensitive than I kind of gave room for before. So I warm up at home and then again at the theater, I have to drink more water than I want to admit. I can't inhale anything Ooh, no, because it, no, I feel it. Um, alcohol affects me. 
I'm just a tender flower. You are delicate. We are delicate. Artists are delicate. We have to be careful with our instruments. It's like an instrument. That's this right. This is it, you know? That's yeah. exactly right. Here we are. TPT tent. I just got to the theater with Micah. This is my fake boyfriend. We are gonna go get our COVID tests and then we have a warm up and then a fight call. And then we do acting. Acting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, warm up, fight call, and then I go to my, or I drop my water bottle by my station, tune my ukulele, and then I come back to our little dressing room. Something that's really special about this show is that we play you know, two women who are best friends since childhood. And what's been sort of baked in to just the way it's worked is that we share a change, <laughs> yeah. A change room, a dressing room. And we're kind of like in tandem through a lot of the steps of that process, which is just nice to, I mean, you were already my dear friend, but just to have that kind of like consistent proximity before we go onto a stage. For sure. Um, yeah, get into costume, makeup, Mike. Mm, makeup costume. That's right. Oh, we true. Do, the devil. Okay. <laughs> we do makeup costume. Makeup Mike into the bra oh, costume. Yeah. Into the underpants for me. <laughs> and, then, and then I have a little lozenge. It's the little treat for me. Oh my gosh. Every so show. Awesome. And then we get our places, or our beginner's call. We walk into the loading dock. Everybody's in that like pre show <laughs> excitement stage. And we follow Judy up the ramp of the parking lot, and then we stand in that little hot tent and try to get air into our lungs before we go out in front of all the people. So every third day, um, the company has a rapid COVID test, um, which sometimes we have to come in for. Um, we're usually called half an hour before our call to do those, but it's a 15 minute test. So a little grace period there in case anything should happen. Um, we are given a link with a COVID screening, free screening form and has you know, put your name in, your employee number, what date is it, contact info, asks you the regular mandate questions that we're all familiar with now. Do you have any symptoms? Have you been around anyone who's had to self-isolate? Um, and so on and so forth. We're encouraged to complete those before we arrive online so that we can go right to the desk and give our name, receive a bracelet. Um, today is hot pink. Nice, colorful, they change every day. And um, recently we've stopped wearing them because we have to take them off for the show. And every time I took mine off to then come back for the next show, I, they were lost. So um, I put it on my bag or something. Also still that from Eva. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's screening. Then we go do our test, and then we go do our warm-up. And then, and so on and so forth. <laughs> oh, and we have to have the these masks on until we get the standby. Like, we're masked inside the building, mm -hmm. except we're putting on makeup and stuff, except in our dressing room. And then, yeah, we're, ma we're masked to come out there, we're masked backstage. Judy says stand by and then we can take our masks off, which is, yeah, it's just a reminder of the fact that um, we're doing this during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Strange, but yeah, it's always a moment where finally we take them off and we can see each other's faces again. And it's yeah. Like, okay. Then, you know, after the show, de-costumize, sometimes de makeup -ify. If we have a second show, then it's like a quick, you know, you don't want to completely come down, but get the adrenaline sort of out. I like to um, just sit on the couch very still. Sometimes close my eyes, sometimes a little thick up. Um, just distract myself. Then eat a nourishing meal, something not too big, like fueling. Maybe have a nap if, if I feel like it. I don't have a nap or take a walk. There's things I can reach my hands. Part of the thing that I love so much about this show and this experience is that we are doing it now. 
in a time where I think people have been kind of starved for like, like collaboration, but also closeness to strangers. Also just like the sound of peripheral laughter happening, like sitting and hearing human people laugh around you. Like, I think in a way it's like, you know, hunger is the best sauce. And I feel that people's willingness to participate is probably like heightened by almost two years of not being able to gather. But also it's like, it imbues a different energy for us on stage because we too have been away from people. So the experience is like necessarily communal. Like everybody is implicated. Yeah, I mean, obviously art is an amazing vehicle for transmitting hope um, mm. and empathy and knowledge. And I feel good. I feel good being a part of that. Ah, I like it. I, I enjoy it very much.